The Rise of Skywalker brought the resurrection of Emperor Palpatine, who is probably the biggest villain in cinematic history. After his death at the hands of Darth Vader in Return of the Jedi, nobody really saw his return coming, especially not for the final film in a three-episode trilogy, which seemed to have already established its main heroes and villains. But then there we were last April as the first teaser trailer for Episode 9 dropped, and we heard the unmistakable laugh of the late Emperor. <laughs> We would later come to find out that he had been pulling the strings all along, concealing himself in the shadows, until the time was right for him to broadcast his return. We still don't really know how he came back, but in the movie, he actually does say he has died before, which tells us that he did not simply survive being thrown down the ventilation shaft of the Death Star, which blew up moments later. But one way or another, he did come back, and some fans had a pretty big problem with this. The big knock on Palpatine's return was that it undermined the sacrifice Darth Vader made in Return of the Jedi, while also disproving the prophecy of the Chosen One. But I'm here to tell you that's not the case. So let me first start out by pointing out that Anakin Skywalker did actually fulfill his destiny and validate the prophecy of the Chosen One. He did bring balance to the Force. In order to restore balance, the Sith needed to be destroyed, which meant they needed to first reveal themselves. The Sith had been lurking in the shadows for centuries, concealing themselves from the Jedi, while patiently and methodically preparing for their return to supremacy. Although it wasn't necessary for the Jedi to fall in order for Anakin to fulfill his destiny, his destruction of the Jedi Order did not disprove the prophecy of the Chosen One. It was simply not what the Jedi were expecting when they read the prophecy, which stopped them from preventing the Great Purge in the end. I believe that the Force chose Anakin as the one who would bring balance, realizing that there were multiple avenues that could be taken to reach the final destination. While he may not have chosen the right one from a moral standpoint, his decision to join the Sith did not nullify the prophecy. At the end of the day, the Force moves towards balance, and it doesn't really matter how this is achieved. So while the Jedi didn't need to be destroyed, the end of the Order did not mark the end of the Chosen One's prophecy. By destroying the Jedi, Anakin had finally revealed the Sith. And no, this doesn't justify his actions in any way, because for one, there was another much easier, more appropriate way to go about it by simply arresting Chancellor Palpatine or assisting Mace Windu in destroying him. And two, his motive at the time of Order 66 was not to bring balance to the Force, it was to save Padme. But the point here is that however we got to that point doesn't actually matter. At the end of Return of the Jedi, Anakin returns to the light, destroying both Sidious and Vader in one move, and finally fulfilling his destiny. In this moment, Vader did destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force. Nowhere in the prophecy does it say that the Chosen One will restore balance for all eternity. In The Last Jedi, Luke says for many years there was balance, so Anakin's destiny had been fulfilled. When the Force is uprooted and thrown out of sorts again by Palpatine, this no longer has anything to do with Anakin. He can't help it that Palpatine somehow refuses to die, or even worse, has found a way to come back to life in some shape or form. Technically, Palpatine didn't have to die at all for balance to be restored. He could have just been locked away for the rest of his life, although he probably would have escaped, or even been turned to the light, even though that's pretty much the most unlikely scenario ever. But you get the point. The Force is seeking balance, and it doesn't matter how that comes, whether it's through the death of a certain character, or their return to the light, or even their turn to the dark, or one character becoming the embodiment of the light and the dark, as we sort of saw with Rey and Ben in the dyad they had formed. The Sith were eliminated for over 20 years, meaning the Chosen One had fulfilled his destiny. Palpatine's return marks the beginning of a new journey. Episodes 1 through 6 told the story of Anakin Skywalker as he grew up, fell to the darkness, and then once again returned to the light. The sequel trilogy tells the story of the grandchildren of Skywalker and Palpatine. So while it is a part of the same saga, and all nine films are tied together, episodes 7, 8, and 9 are really a separate story. It's the same family facing the same evil, but this journey is no longer Anakin's to live. Yes, his legacy looms over the story, but it's his grandson who's doing all he can to carry the torch. And that's the point here. This is his grandson's story. Ben Solo's story. Episode 8 gave us the death of Snoke, and 9 brought another end to the Emperor. Ben Solo returns to the light, and Rey survives to carry on the legacy of the Jedi and the Skywalkers. The Sith were destroyed once more, and Balance was once again brought to the Force and to the galaxy. And we could see this same story told a hundred more times in completely different ways, from periods before the Skywalker bloodline began, to long after they're gone. And that would never change the legacy of Anakin Skywalker. You're never going to agree with everything that happens in a movie, especially a Star Wars movie. But in this instance, if you attack Disney and Lucasfilm and J.J. Abrams for their decision to bring Palpatine back, I really disagree with you. And like I've said many times before, that's perfectly fine. We are all entitled to share our opinions, and we should feel comfortable in doing so. 
With that said, I want to point out that Palpatine's return was a concept being entertained since before The Force Awakens even began filming, and something that was heavily explored in Star Wars Legends, which was all material approved by George Lucas. Palpatine's resurrection wasn't just something they threw in there as a final cry for help, and it didn't ruin anything the heroes of the past did. I see the saga as the first six films being the story of Anakin. Yeah, the original trilogy was centered around his children a lot of the time, but their journey ultimately ends with the redemption of their father, making them the catalysts to Anakin's redemption more so than anything else. And then these last three were the legacy of those characters from the past. It was their children starting a new journey, but also carrying what they knew and what they had learned from their family who came before. It was a different story from a different time, and I can appreciate that. But anyways, I think that's just about going to wrap up the video, so if you guys enjoyed, leave a thumbs up to support the channel, subscribe if you're new, and may the force be with you always.